that people can hear. Okay, well, welcome. Um, we're very excited. This is the first time Groovy has ever had its own track at ApacheCon. So we're very excited to be here. Very uh, happy to chat to whoever's around for over the next uh, next few days. And uh, we've got some nice content lined up for you. Hopefully you'll enjoy that and en enjoy the chats. And we'll uh, uh, see you uh, sometime uh, as we go through. So first off, I'm going to talk about uh, Groovy 3 highlights and the Groovy 4 roadmap. You'll be happy to know that Groovy 4 is about 90% uh, released. There's just a little glitch. We've changed. Uh, one of the things I'll mention later on is we've changed our Maven coordinates. A little glitch. And um, I could either go and fix that glitch or I could give this talk. I couldn't do both. So it's um, certainly all on the, you can go and download the distributions off the uh, Apache uh, distribution site, so that's all there. You can start playing with it. The yeah, first alpha alpha one version of Groovy four zero zero. I'll explain what's in in that as as we go along. Okay, so I'm Paul King. Do a lot of things in the Groovy space. Work for ob object computing. Mostly work with uh, on Groovy, but uh, touch a bunch of other projects in the in the Groovy ecosystem. And live in Australia and written books and all sorts of things. So in case I don't uh, mention it uh, too much um, later on, we certainly uh, want to, let me just get my timer going so I don't go over time, sorry. Um, we certainly would like love to have your involvement in the Groovy project. The, the most valuable thing you can give us is your presence, whether that's on just discussions in the mailing list or whether you might get time to dabble with some code or some documentation, all those things are valuable. If you can't do those things, there is an a open collective you can go and uh, join and assist the project in, in, in that way. Uh, some friends of Apache Groovy. And while you're coming and visiting us, uh, be sure to stop by the other 300 plus uh, top level projects at Apache. There's some wonderful projects that are going on and uh, it's, uh, a, a great place for a great home for, for Groovy. Okay, so uh, I guess before I go and talk about Groovy 3 and 4, I should uh, catch you up on uh, what's happened prior to that, so the, the story so far. Groovy started off, humble beginnings, started off in 2003, but version 1 was, wasn't out till 2007. And it, it's had a f the, uh, the blue bars you can hopefully see on on the, the screen there are the contributors so it's always had in the in the early early stages sort of between around roughly about 10 contributors all, all the time and uh, mostly since we've switched over to git it's uh, actually had between 20 and 40 contributors all the time so around about 30 contributors a very small number of those have been uh, sponsored at different phases by different uh, projects but on the whole there have been many more uh, just normal contributors sort of contributing a, maybe snatching a few hours of their time during work or, or a few hours of their uh, spare time and uh, they're the bulk of the numbers of contributors are, are, are of that form so if that's if that's you please come along and we're more than ha happy to uh, to have your contributions as well. There's a, a, a lot, lot, of, lot of words on that uh, slide. Don't be too concerned about trying to read all of those. I put them, I, I put it on the same timeline as the previous slide and I intentionally left it as vertical because I don't really want people to go and read all of the, the words that are on there. But basically the, the pattern of how Groovy's evolved is if, if many of the people involved in the Groovy project are actually uh, people who have also been involved with, with Java, and so they're actually usually intimately associated with the, the Java uh, language and, and uh, ecosystem. And Groovy came about because there were certain pain points at various times and people wanted to uh, improve things. So initially there were things like Ruby on Rails that could let you do all this uh, hoopy metaprogramming capabilities, very, very extensible. 
and Java couldn't do that easily. Java couldn't do scripting easily and, and a whole lot of other scenarios. So Groovy filled in the gaps, if you like. It ha added enhancements that a, a Java programmer uh, might like that might not be in Java, uh, but they could uh, use this companion language called Groovy and do a whole bunch of these things very productively. And over time, <clears throat> the kind of projects that Groovy's been able to take on board has evolved and, and Groovy's evolved. And the, and the pain points for, for, for people in the Java world has, has moved on as well. So Java's advanced quite a bit these days. With some of the things that were a problem in the early, early uh, uh, days when, when Groovy came about, uh, maybe aren't a, a bigger problem anymore, but there's other things that are, there's still pain points there and Groovy keeps evolving, looking for the, the pain points that makes people working in, in the Java ecosystem uh, productive. So that's sort of the, the general pattern, and that's uh, what follows when we get on to uh, Groovy 4 as well. Now, as I said, Groovy adds all these bells and whistles to, to the Java world, if you like. And if you go and look at the things that have been added, there's, there's you know, almost a couple of thousand uh, enhancements in the, in the GDK. So they're enhancements to the, to the Java libraries, if you like. There's over 60 uh, AST transforms, so these are powerful ways that at uh, compilation time to transform your code to save you writing a whole lot of boilerplate code or uh, encompassing design patterns in, in a very succinct and declarative way. So there's a whole lot, these things have always been evolving and that's uh, still the case. If you look at releases, again, that's um, been fairly consistent over the, the lifespan of, of Groovy. There's just been a couple of periods where there was um, a few other things going on at the time. There was a, a bit of a leadership transition very early on. There was moving into Apache a, a few years ago now. And during those phases, the releases dropped just a little bit, but on the whole, it's um, been fairly steady. Downloads, Groovy is growing very, very strongly. It's still uh, the most widely downloaded alternative language on the, on the, uh, the JVM. It'll be close to three quarters of a billion downloads by the end of the year or early next year. So that's, um, the numbers are, numbers are good, still looking healthy. Um, so yeah, it uh, still surprises us that um, the, the downloads keep almost doubling every year, but it's, uh, they're just below doubling at the moment, but it's a uh, pretty nice place to be. Okay, what are some of the uh, highlights in, in Groovy 3? Groovy 3, the, the really big uh, highlight was a brand new parser. So the parser is the thing that turns the source code into things that the compiler uh, knows about data structures that it uses to represent your program. And it's those data structures that eventually uh, what the compiler uses to, to spit out the bytecode that's going to uh, execute when, you're, when your code runs. So the parser is a very important part of the, the whole ecosystem. And, and Groovy was using a parser based on Antler 2, which is unmaintained for nearly 10 years now. And so, um, it wasn't, we weren't in good stead. Um, the, 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 it was starting to get a little bit um, rusty, that technology. So we, we swapped over to Antler 4. And having that new parser allows us to do uh, several things. There's, there's some new operators and things that we'll, we'll look at in a minute. That we, it's allowed us to add. But also, the, I showed you that picture before of um, features being added to, to, um, to, to Groovy over time. One of the things that, because Groovy's had a very, very close relationship with Java during its entire history, one of the things that we very frequently do is absorb changes in Java. We absorb those into the Groovy language. So that's all about making Groovy a language that is super easy for Java developers to use and learn. And so they'll feel right at home and be able to cut and paste snippets of, of Java and run, paste them into Groovy. Or, you know, run it maybe unchanged or maybe only slightly changed, and then over time uh, add more idioms. So that's sort of been a um, part and parcel of, of something that's served the Groovy language well. And we've, we, we try, we, we continue to try to do that. But more recently with, with Java starting to move more quickly, being able to absorb all the changes was becoming more difficult. Now with the new parser, it's uh, much more easy for us to, to uh, start down that path. So the parser is an important plank in, in Groovy 3. 
The other thing that happened in the JDK 9 Plus world was uh, Java modules. And that was a bit of a, uh, I was going to try to say nightmare, I mean, a road bump or something in, in the um, evolution of, of, of Groovy. Lots of the design choices that Groovy made, uh, the dynamic language and the language that uses reflection and so on, and uh, does um, the, the, the method selection at runtime, choosing what method to, to invoke, um, is based on, it's, it's using decisions that aren't aligned with how the, the Java module system evolved. So if there's an internal class that you're not supposed to see the, um, the name of the class, but you're meant to reference it via an interface, um, that's how all the Java code will be compiled. And that's, that's how they designed the module system. Groovy uh, um, up until recently would, would be using the internal class name directly and it might not have been something that you were supposed to see. So you get all these illegal access warnings and a, and a bunch of other stuff. We've rejigged uh, Groovy to avoid those issues. So that was another thing that uh, has taken a while and it actually impacts on even our own uh, package names in our own classes as well. The split packaging uh, issue, which I'll talk about in a minute. And the other thing that um, we did in Groovy 3 was a bunch of other improvements. So other pain points that people were looking at and, and so on. So there's some GDK additions. So I'll go through some of those in a minute. There's a new null check, AST transform. Um, I won't go into that. It just uh, makes it easy for you to automatically check all the nulls in your, in your code in a declarative way. And there's some more documentation options. So Groovy Doc, you can now access the, 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 the data in Groovy Doc during compilation. So it's in the AST. And you can even, there's a, a mechanism to even embed your, your documentation into the class file. So it'll be stored in annotation data there. So it's available. So that means you, if you wanted to, that you could follow the, uh, the Python pattern of having the documentation um, embedded in the code rather than having a separate Java doc jar. Um, that's, that's, that's there. People can do either way at the moment with, with, uh, with Groovy. Okay. So what are some of the new operators? I haven't got time to go into them all. I'll just, just show you a couple of ones that are relatively easy to, to, to look at. Um, if you've ever done an instance of and you have to do a not, you, you've got to sort of group the whole thing in, in, a, in layers of brackets and it becomes potentially difficult to read, especially if you've got ands and ors with other, uh, other terms and some of them might be bracketed instance of or whatever. And so it becomes quite cumbersome to, to represent something like that, but just doing a not instance of operator, it makes that really easy. Uh, not in is the same sort of uh, scenario. Uh, reference equality, if you know Groovy's double equals operator, you'll know that that uh, mirrors up with what Java calls, with Java's equals method. So what you're doing 90% of the time is you want to know about ob ob objects equality in terms of their, um, the, bus the business domain rather than reference equality. So Gro Groovy overtakes, uh, it takes over the double equals uh, operator and uses that for uh, maps that onto equals. And we used to use is to get reference uh, equality uh, up until now. We, we can now use the triple equals or the not double equals for the negated ver version to now get uh, the, that uh, reference identity there. There's also an Elvis assignment operator. So if you've seen the Elvis operator, there's a variant that you can use when assigning things now, which is a nice compact uh, variation in terms of um, something that if you were using a an assignment that involved the, the ternary operator, go and look at the Elvis assignment operator and it might shorten your uh, expressions even more. Safe indexing. So we have the safe navigation operator, question mark dot. We've had that for a long, long time. You can now have the same question mark when you've got uh, array indexes or uh, list indexes and uh, that'll safeguard uh, if you're aggregate collection is uh, null. So there's there's some new operators that, that came in Groovy 3. There's a whole, whole bunch of them. Um, they're just some, some highlights there. The big ticket, of course, was the uh, Lambda syntax. So Groovy from the, from the get-go has had a closure syntax. And it's very, very similar to the Lambda syntax, but it is different. And that's both good and 
good and bad. Uh, if if it happened to be the same syntax, we we could have. You might think we could just leave leave Groovy um, alone and just sort of swap swap the innards over to to Java's lambdas. But it turns out closures and lambdas have uh, different pros and cons. So lambdas are a much more lightweight uh, mechanism, and um, closures are they've got some more feature rich uh, things that you can you can do with the, do with them. And um, you can you can go and do partial application. You can do you can combine them together in more more ways. You can do various kinds of uh, caching with memwise and so on. So there's times when you when lambdas are exactly what you want, and there's times when closures are what you want. So we actually wanted to support both syntaxes, and that's what uh, Groovy three offers. There's a few variants there. All the variants you, that you'd normally expect to, to be there are there. Okay. Um, Related to uh, lambdas is method references. So method references is how you can get uh, avoid writing the whole lambda if, if what the um, your lambda contents would be are actually just the uh, would be calling an individual method. You can just use a method reference to get to those. So there's a double colon, a, a class or instance, and then a uh, instance or a static uh, method method name. So that's all supported. There's variants of that for using with constructors. Don't worry about all the uh, the code on the slide. It's just to show, show some uh, typical examples where you might use these sorts of things. And we've got um, array versions and even multi-dimension array versions there. All of that is uh, supported. Now there are is uh, I'm. As well as uh, method references, Groovy has always had a thing called method closures. So, like there's lambdas and closures, there's the exact same equivalent in the in the in the uh, method reference wor uh, world. So, if you do string col uh, double colon to lowercase in some compile static code, like down the bottom of that slide, that'll actually be a native Java lambda that gets generated. The same sort of thing that Java would generate in that in that scenario. If in the top slide you do instead of double colon you do uh, dot ampersand, that will generate a method closure. And there are times and that, that'll be more heavyweight. It will involve a, a, a object instance creation and, and um, it's a more sort of heavyweight operator than what the lambda is going to be down, down the bottom there. But the advantage of the uh, method closure is that, as I said before, you could do with normal closures. You can do them with method closures. You can do Dot, dot curry for partial application. You can do caching with memwise. You can do tail call recursion with uh, trampoline. There's a few variant, additional variants on how you can combine uh, closures together for so closure composition, functional composition, higher order functions, and all that sort of stuff. So you've got both of those at your disposal, and you use them where, as you see fit. Now there's a bunch of other things as well that um, cause Java has been evolving more quickly and the old parser uh, wasn't keeping up with the, those sorts of making it easy for us to make those changes. It ended up being a bit of a backlog of stuff that we didn't bring over uh, in, into Groovy for a while out of Java and all, all of that's now in, in Groovy 3. So there's try with resources. There's a variation of that that came with JK9 we could leave certain uh, declarations out and so on. Um, this one, an early one from Java is just arbitrary nested code blocks. There's the var reserved uh, type, which can be for local variables or as a parameter for your uh, lambdas. So the second and third lines in that code block, they're in JDK 10 and JDK 11. And there's default methods in interfaces as well, another JDK 8 feature. So there's a bunch of stuff that we brought across that, that was much easier to do with the new parser. Now, um, so you might think, so what Java's had all this since, all of this since its ver version? Well, the nice thing about um, all of those things, whether they come out of JDK 10, 11, 14, whatever, all of those run on JDK 8 with Groovy. So you can use the var keyword with your Lambda expressions on JDK 8 and so on. So that's um, one nice thing if you, Still wondering why you'd be using Groovy when Java's got all these things. 
if you're stuck on, on JDK 8 and you want, you've got feature envy for your JDK 14, 15, 16 features, then, then Groovy might be a nice thing to go look at. Okay, so the, um, the classic, there's a bunch of, just a couple more things that, um, things that have been in Java and then we, we, we hadn't brought across uh, that are now easier to do. The do while loop, the, the little curly braces there after the do with some code in it, uh, looked to the old parser very much like a closure straight after a do method. And the new parser is a bit smarter. So it's a lot, it was a lot easier for us to, to retrofit and just add the do while loop there now. We, we left it off <clears throat> previously. I mean, often you can get by with just a normal while loop anyway. And with closures, there's a lot of uh, internal uh, iteration, internal looping type mechanisms available. Do we really need to do while? Well, we've got it there now anyway, so it's 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 there. And there was some slight uh, an enhanced classic for loop with commas in amongst the terms. There's multi assignment looping. There's a bunch of other stuff that uh, was added as well. So um, Parrot made it a lot easier to do those changes. So again, uh, so Java style array initialization, Groovy's got uh, its own literal list uh, notation. You use square brackets for, for lists and maps. And that's nice and compact and it uh, makes it much easier to, to uh, write literal lists. But if you're copying and pasting some Java code, it, it might just happen to uh, have uh, this, the, the Java syntax notation in it. And again, the, the curly braces there, looked like uh, a closure to the old parser and it was a bit tricky to convince it to, uh, to support this syntax. The new parser is smart enough to know oh, you, you could never have one of those closures directly after an, an array declaration. So we're happy to, to, to let that be a um, standard Java style array initialization there. And you can still do the, all the old syntax of course, but, but these are supported as well now. So if you're cutting and pasting code, you can cut and paste it like that, and then you can replace it with the square brackets and get rid of the the array declaration there at an appropriate time if, if that's uh, something you want to do to make your code look a bit leaner. Okay, one of the big impacts, the road, road bump for, for Groovy was we've had our own module system for a long time, and our module system didn't have the same conventions that uh, the Java 9 <coughs> JPMS module system introduced. So one of the restrictions that it introduced was that within any um, two different modules, you couldn't use the same package. So if you've got Groovy Util, Groovy.util as a package name in Groovy Ant module, you can't have that Groovy.util as a package name in any other module. Certainly not exported anyhow. So that conflicts with uh, how Groovy had structured its code. So what we've done in Groovy 3 is actually made uh, module friendly variants of all in, impacted classes and impacted uh, packages. And <clears throat> there's, there's a, a bunch of them listed on the next couple of slides. Some of them are uh, classes or packages you've probably never, never seen and may never use. Other ones are probably a bit more common. I'll just stop on. So if you've used Groovy test case, if you, so that's sort of Groovy uh, JUnit 3 vintage testing. Maybe you're on to JUnit 4 or JUnit 5. Um, you can certainly still do that with Groovy. But if you've got some of the uh, JUnit 3 uh, vintage tests still around, you might want to swap to the Groovy.test package name instead of the Groovy util package name. Now in Groovy 3, both of those exist. You can use the old one or the new one. So you can start using Groovy 3 and keep keep the, all your old names, you don't have any work to do. And over time, while using Groovy 3, you can start moving some of your code over to using the new package names. When you get to Groovy 4, you'll need to be on the new package names. The old package names, they're deprecated in Groovy 3, but still there, but they're gone in Groovy 4. And that's to make the modules in Groovy 4 be fully uh, JPMS compliant. So we want, we want Groovy to be a, a good citizen and uh, friendly in the module world, even if it's not as um, super popular amongst developers yet, we want to be friendly in that space. And we want to be ready if it uh, gets uh, 
in more widespread use, we certainly want to have all of our stuff um, in a form that uh, readily digestible from in, in the Java world. Okay, I mentioned before the illegal access warnings. So uh, you should be able to run most of the uh, most groovy code now on in, on the latest versions, and you should get no of those illegal access warnings. There are we 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 do know of a, a few scenarios that. Um, Still bring out those illegal access warnings. Most of those are fairly rare, but it's certainly we regard it as work in progress. And a few spot areas where you're still getting them, certainly let us know and we can um, work out whether it's something you're doing wrong or something that we should be uh, fixing up in the compiler. So that's just for your interest. That's Groovy 4 running on JDK 16 in the uh, top left black window there. So if you want the latest and greatest, uh, that, that's what you, you, sh you should all have that download and running by, before the next talk. Okay, JDK improvements. There was a bunch of them. Some of the requests for these came from the data science community. So in the Groovy sort of, it's still small, very small compared to something like Python in the data science community, but it's, but it's growing. And that community is asking us for, for additional things. So if you like, Groovy is like the Python of the, the JDK world in that it allows you to have nice, succinct, easy to read code for people who might not be um, full time ha uh, hardcore hackers or Java developers. They, 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 they might be people who do a bit of coding and a bit of some other uh, data science y topic. And <clears throat> Groovy is a good, a good fit for, for people like them. So some of them are asking for, for features and some. Enhancements to the Groovy console that we've got, uh, done and some other things we've got in mind to also assist with that. Okay, so that's uh, just a few highlights of Groovy 3. Quickly on to Groovy 4, again, it'll just be a few highlights. Groovy 4 is in alpha phase. So a lot of the stuff here is um, early, it's early access. We, we're putting it out there because we want to get feedback from people. Um, but there's still plenty more that we probably would like to put in here. and there's uh, even some of the stuff that I'm going to show you is subject to change. It's, it's, it's um, clearly marked as incubating in all of the <clears throat> the documentation, but we we don't want that to put you off uh, starting to kick the tires and, and try stuff out and let us know whether it's um, meeting your purposes. So what's happened? The if you're going and looking for it, well, as I said, Groovy Four um, it's everywhere but Maven Central, so you won't find it in an org Apache Groovy. Um, just yet, but it will be hopefully in the next uh, 24 hours. But don't go looking for Groovy 4 in all code house Groovy is, is the main thing. It's, it's now swapped over. We're, we've uh, been in, in the, we joined the incubator, I think over five years ago now in, in Apache. We've been a top level project for a few years. So uh, certainly time to, to make that change. And hopefully we need to get the word out so that everyone knows to start looking for Groovy 4 in, in a new place. But everything else, it looks similar apart from just that, the group ID. The, again, because of the, 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 um, split packaging requirement of Java modules, the old classes, Groovy util versions of things like XML paths and XML Scripper are gone in Groovy 4. So make sure you switch over to the, the new name, Groovy XML. There's some slight tweaks to the Groovy all, um, POM. The Groovy all POM is meant to be the things that um, a lot of uh, things that most people find valuable in Groovy all bundled together. And it's potentially subject to change in, in different versions. So if you don't, so what's happened is Groovy Test and G is one of our least used modules at the moment. And Groovy YAML is becoming more and more used. So we've, we've added Groovy YAML into Groovy all and uh, removed Groovy Test and G. If, you, if you're using Groovy Destiny, it's not a big issue. Just go and add it to your list of uh, dependencies. If you've got YAML added as a dependency, you can remove that if, you, if you've also got Groovy All. If you don't like this flux that's happening uh, with Groovy All, just go and specify the modules that you want. You'll probably end up with a, a slimmer looking class path if you do that anyway, and you won't be subject to any changes. But it's Groovy All, it's all about making it easy to get all the common modules. Groovy. As we've said, had, used to have an old parser. In Groovy 3, we actually had both parsers there. So you could 
Parrot was the, um, the new parser you got by default, but there was a switch. You'd go and use the old parser. If you had some problematic code that was playing up in Parrot, you could go switch it back. That's all gone now. It's been cleaned away. The other thing that uh, we've had for quite some time now is, so the JDK introduced some invoked dynamic bytecode instructions quite a few years ago now. In the early days, they're a little bit flaky. Um, so we had the ability to use them for quite a while now, but we didn't, um, we, we still gave out the classic bytecode as the preferred bytecode uh, initially. Over time, the indie bytecode has become uh, rock solid. And there were a few places that it was noticeably slower. We've now cleaned up most of those. So the indie code is, is the, 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 the best kind of code that you could have had anyway. So we've gotten rid of the classic bytecode. We've now got indie only bytecode in Groovy 4. So we're certainly, certainly keen on feedback if anyone is having any, any problems with that. Now, Groovy's always been about extensibility. So whenever we've added features into the language, we've, we've tried to say, well, we might not get this right, but we'll, we'll allow you to change things. So when we added uh, static nature to Groovy and added uh, a type checker, we actually made it extensible. And this was for, for various reasons. Um, if you've got some very, very dynamic code, and you, but you want some parts of type checking, maybe you're trying to make it more performant. If we get, just gave you a canned type checker and it was very, very strict, you might not be able to bring your code over to use any of the static features. If we just gave you a very, very, um, if, if we tried to let, allow you to bring more code over, we could perhaps produce a type checker that was a bit bit uh, less less strict, a bit lazy about how it uh, checks things. We didn't really like either of those options. So we, we gave you one that we think, thought was going to be close to what, what Java people would be would expect, but we allow extensions which allow you to make the, the type checker more lax or make it stricter. So if you want, you can have a type checker that says, oh, I'll let you have uppercase and lowercase versions of every method call or every variable if you want. So you can make it more relaxed. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but, but uh, it's got that capability. There, there are various uh, scenarios when you're writing DSLs and you're using some dynamic features where, where it does come in very handy. So it's, it's great to have that capability there, but it also can be uh, stricter. So in this, uh, so we've added that capability and we know people are using it, but what we noticed was not many people are sharing any type checkers they may be using. So we decided for Groovy 4 that we'd bundle some type checkers uh, into Groovy 4 and, and hopefully over time we'll get uh, more of the, these uh, type checkers that people might be using and uh, they'll come together in libraries and get shared a bit more. So that's that's our, our hope and we'll see, see what happens uh, with that. Um, so if you look at the top of the slide, you'll see that uh, that's um, just a normal dynamic groovy and it's got a, a year in a string and you're gonna parse that with a bit of a regex pattern there. And I've left off the closing round uh, bracket at the end of that expression. So at runtime, so I won't know till at runtime if I didn't notice, unless I've got an ID that uh, warns me, which some of them do, which is nice. But at runtime, I'll get a pattern syntax exception. But if I um, make that, that code type checked, it's either at a method level or a class level, and tell it to use the regex checker, it'll then, uh, that'll fail compilation. It'll tell me that uh, the bad regex there, unclosed group. So that's nice. And um, if you know Groovy, you'll know that all of it, it can, it can customize the compiler. So I can make all of the noise that it looks like it's quite noisy to invoke that regex checker. You can make all that go away and be hidden by uh, having a configuration a compiler configuration file or um, setting up uh, comp uh, compilation helper methods if you're doing this uh, in your code via an API. So you can make all that uh, disappear and you can make it weaker or stronger, as I said. Just a few examples of, of, of what it picks up. The first one's missing a, a curly brace. The second one's missing a round bracket. So they're quantifier brace and grouping brackets. In a regex, you might have like a, a plus or a star or a question mark for zero, one or more or something. So if you put that, that uh, meta character, 
without a term in front of it, it's known as a dangling meta character. So it picks up all of those. It picks them up when you're doing the, the pattern, uh, you're trying to do the literal pattern, which is the, the tilde, or Java's pattern.compile, or the find or regex operators, or pattern.matches, or if you've got, uh, so if I've got foobar there and I'm going to uh, uh, do two groups with three, three characters each, and then I go and look at the first group, it'll tell me if I've got foobar and I group into two lots of three, foo is the first group. If I looked at the second group, it would find bar. But if I try to look to the third group, it'll tell me at compilation time that there's only two groups there. That's a type error. You can't um, have that expression. Um, so it, it's, and it will do the same if, if you're using all the, um, the Java classes to do that longhand as well, as well as the uh, Groovy's um, operators. So there's things it does. A lot of that's relying on being able to find the, like the constant three or the constant strings in your code where, as during compilation. But if you if, if you go and look at the there's a checker framework that uh, this the way this is done is uh, takes a little bit of inspiration from. It's got a whole lot more smart that we could do as well. So if you had a string with two groups and you had another string with three groups and you concatenate those strings, it'll now know I've got a string with five groups. And if you do things like read in, so here I've got string constants that the type check is looking at. If I'm reading in a string from the, from the user, so it might be reading from standard in or somewhere, it won't let me, this isn't what's built in, this is what's in the other checker framework, and we, we might look at this. Um, it won't let you compile a pattern.compile uh, statement if it's got that string that came in from the, from the command line. Or from the uh, from the user with a read, read learn of some kind, and it'll regard what came in from the user as tainted, and you'll have to call a method that, that validates the regex and make sure it's uh, a valid one, which it then becomes untainted, and then let, lets you you do pattern dot compile. So there's a whole bunch of things that we, could be added to this, but this is just to sort of give people a flavour of, of what's possible with these sort of uh, type checkers. Now we, we we noticed the same thing for macro methods. So we, we added a feature called macros and we added a thing called macro methods. We do know people who are using them, but they weren't being shared very much. So we've bundled in um, a couple of example ones. These might change very slightly the details of this, but this will have this looks like it's some sort of global method, but it's there's actually no method called NV or NVI or NVD. They they call two string or dot inspect or dot dump on a bunch of variables that you get fed in. And those variables are known, the names of those are known by the compiler and it just creates a string value at compilation time, piecing together the two strings or the dot in specs or whatever of all the variables you give it. And it'll output those things. So, so the, all that happens at compilation time and the end uh, that gets, gets replaced. So it's a macro that's happening and you can write your own and we hope more people will um, write some of these and we can share some more of them around. We added a, a Java shell. The, um, we've had a Groovy shell that lets us use snippets of uh, Groovy code everywhere. We thought it would be useful to do snippets of Java. And in fact, we use that in our own testing. We test the compiler. We have snippets that we get, you know, we might have snippets that are generated that test for public, private and protected methods or something. And we'll, we'll run them through the Java compiler, run them through the Groovy compiler and check that the bytecode that both are producing are, are, are equivalent or compatible or whatever we're trying to check in our tests. So we added, added that, that's a nice little feature. And we thought we might, since we have that now, we might as well extend the Groovy console to let it can now can compile or run Java as well. So you can compile Java code. This, this That particular code you can see in the console there, you can run it as Java or as Groovy and it'll give the same output. But the, the um, Groovy console let you do that now. Two two transforms and then I'm, I'm uh, done. Um, there's a POJO transform. So when you put compile static on a class, it it makes the code more like the code Java would produce. Um, when you add POJO, it actually goes even further and it it strips out stuff that makes uh, things like setting meta classes and extending. Groovy object and uh, the mind if I barge in, Paul? Yeah, yeah, 
Um, it's uh, 55, uh, five minutes oh, okay. of the hour, yeah. and uh, the next session is about to start. Okay. So I'll just say thank you to Paul, and you can finish up now, but um, we are starting the next session in the link I just pasted in the uh, chat. Excellent. I'll be over there shortly. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Got uh, this slide, one more, and then I'll, I'll wrap up. Okay, so um, these Podro classes, you can compile them up with the Groovy compiler, and then you can use them in Java without the Groovy jars being on your compilation class path or runtime class path for Java. So you can think of Podro for the cases that it supports, which is not everything. Uh, it'll, it'll allow Groovy to be like a Lombok if you want it to be. Okay, the final thing is we've added record type. So if in Groovy 2.5, we made immutable into a whole bunch of fine grained uh, AST transforms. Turns out records are just a, dif a different mix of those fine grained features and a few other little twists added in and we can support records. So you can now write a record like this and it'll produce something that's very, very close to a Java record. And, and by the time we finalize this feature, it may actually be exactly like a Java record in certain circumstances, maybe when you put compile static on it. We don't support the syntax down the bottom yet, but we may even support that by the time Groovy 4 is, um, is ready. And we also added G contracts uh, in, into Groovy as a, as a module. So um, it's a, that project had become uh, uh, archived and uh, we thought it's, it's got enough value that we'd bring it into the Groovy core. So we've added that in. There's still a bunch of other stuff. I won't go into all the details, but there's more things that we're looking at. So if there's things that you want to see in Groovy 4, we'd be uh, keen to hear from you. Okay. So come and see us at the project or come and see us at one of the other sessions. There's a hackathon session um, tomorrow. It's later my today, but for most of you, it'll be your tomorrow. Hopefully come and see you at uh, one of those sessions. Thanks everyone.